Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving, of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Night Light, a reminder that you are never alone. to Night Light. So glad you could join me. I have Lisa Campion with me tonight, and she is one of the most remarkable authors of all of the ones that I interview. She is the one whose work I send people towards who are either beginning a spiritual pathway or increasing the pathway that they've been on and looking to expand upon the gifts and talents that they carry within. The book we're going to be talking about is Awakening Your Psychic Ability, and it is a practical guide to develop your intuition, demystify the spiritual world, and open your psychic senses. It's a go-to guide for understanding and strengthening your psychic abilities. Have you ever wondered if you were a psychic, or have you been told you were deeply intuitive? Do you ever have a sense that something will happen, and then it does? Have you ever had a strong feeling or dream that someone you cared about needed your help and it turned out to be true? And if so, you may be psychically gifted. Psychic experiences are nothing to be afraid of. In fact, they can greatly enrich your life. So how can you further deepen your intuition and open your psychic senses? From Reiki master Lisa Campion, author of The The Art of Psychic Reiki and Energy Healing for Empaths, This transformative and practical guide will help you understand, develop, and harness your own psychic ability so you can live your life with a greater sense of meaning and purpose. You'll learn how to turn up the volume on your abilities when you choose as well as to discover essential strategies for setting boundaries. This book includes powerful guidance to help you interpret dreams and omens, connect with ancestors and soulmates, understand who and what spirit guides are and how to work with them, create a map of your psychic realm so you can successfully navigate your abilities, identify which areas of your life need healing to cultivate psychic self-defensive skills to keep you safe on your journey. Our intuition is constantly guiding us towards our life's purpose. We just need to know how to listen to this inner voice. Let this profound book guide you as you connect with and strengthen your psychic abilities and experience a deeper, more spiritual life. I, all, I, I, I always love the books that I read for this show. And, and I, I wouldn't put an author on the show if I didn't highly recommend them. In this case, it's even more than that. Because on top of the book and, and how beautifully it's put together – and how gently she guides you through each area. There are also links to meditations that she's done that are online that you can listen to to help you guide yourself through these different exercises that she gives you to develop your skills. It's, it's a profound book. It's beautifully done. And it keeps you not only open to the, the wonderful spiritual essences that we carry within, but it's practical. It doesn't go strange and weird on you it keeps you settled and balanced and rooted in 
in a in a in a good place so that you truly can reach in and touch into the gifts that you carry within and feel safe in doing so. So I I highly recommend this book. If I were still doing classes in psychic development, this would be my handbook. And actually, if you have the book, you don't need to have a workshop. So welcome to the show, Lisa. I'm so glad you're here to share your time with us. Oh, thank you so much, Barbara. That was such a delightful introduction. And uh, thank you so much for having me on your show. Well, you've been on before, and I raved about you then. And... and <laughs> continue to rave about you because what you've done is you've taken a lot of the woo-woo stuff out of psychic development and and made it so practical that it's it's sort of like if you if you needed help with hearing you get a hearing aid if you needed help with your eyes you get glasses and in this case you have you have talents and skills and, and, and magic inside of you and you give them the map to find it and and to integrate it into their lives, so it, it's it's an amazing book. I, I can't believe that, you know, I, I can't know anyone who couldn't benefit from it, whether they're already a practitioner, or if they're just starting on the journey. Mm. Gosh, well, yeah, that was my intention with the book, was to um, to really help people understand that psychic ability is a skill that anyone can learn kind of like athletic ability or musical ability. We all have some. We've all got something. And if we work on it, if we practice, if we have the right tools and the right knowledge, we can, whatever our, you know, uh, ability, wherever our capacity is, we can get that to go stronger and bigger and, um, you know, like a muscle that when we exercise and it gets more tuned up. That's really what I wanted people to know. Well, yeah, exactly, and that's what all of these skills truly are. And and it's it's sort of like, <clears throat> you know, am I ever going to play the piano? Not this lifetime, but but I know my fingers remember playing it in another lifetime. So that so that there's you know you you can you can identify things that at one time you may have had a skill for, and it just it just isn't going to be functional this lifetime. But 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 the psychic the the um, Tuning into our guides and tuning into our purpose and and playing with the different the different tools that are available to us is something very profound and it isn't just psychic. I mean, you have clear audience and clear sentient, and you have all of the clairs. and And I think people have to realize that that there is so much here to work with that it makes it you know, an enjoyable read and the meditations. I, I haven't listened to any of the ones that you have online, but I've read through them. And if you if you have a guidance system that, uh, that takes you through it as well, I mean, it takes all the work out of this. It's just amazing. Huh. Yeah, and it, and it really is. I think we um, I think we can have it at our fingertips. Like I said, like if we know it, we need to know stuff. We need to, and we need to practice a little bit. So my hope was that the exercises in the book would help people get the practice in. Like you can read about going to the gym, but if you want to get in shape, you actually have to put the book down and, and work out a little bit. And so a lot of the guided meditations and the, um, you know, the, the journal prompts and the exercises in the book are really, were really meant for that. Yeah, and you do, you do emphasize. The, the aspect of keeping a journal and how important it really is, and that's that's something that that I I absolutely push almost every chance I get because a, a journal helps you to, in many ways, when you get insight, when you get an aha moment, when you get one of those those flashes of of magic, if you write it down, you anchor it within your reality, and therefore it becomes an anchor. And, and and a channel for more information to come through. It's a matter of of saying to the universe, "I got it, and I'm connected to mm-hmm. it. Send more." And yeah. instead of saying, "Yeah, so you know, it, it's so, so important because I think a lot of times our our psychic impressions are sort of ephemeral. They're sort of like like dreams, you know, like when you have a dream and you remember it, and you go about your day and you forget it and forget it and forget it. An hour later, you've totally forgotten whatever your dream was. And our, our psychic um, experiences are often like that. They can seem really profound and deep, 
and amazing when we have them. And if we don't record them somewhere, they, they sort of slip through our memory. And I always say people will be incredibly amazed by how psychic you already are if you just start writing down dreams that you remember, psychic hits that you remember, hunches and feelings that you get when you meet people for the first time, signs and omens, uh, all of the card pulls, if you're pulling card, you know, oracle cards or tarot cards, all of those things when we write them down help focus our attention. Like And like you said, we get more of what we pay attention to and feel grateful for. We tend to get more of that delivered into our life. So it's a really fantastic tool for that. Oh, yeah. And, and I think it's fascinating when when we we know something before we it actually even happens i know there was i had a friend who um who visited me like a year ago and and every time i i took the sheets off the bed to change the sheets the next day i would get a phone call from this person and <laughs> you know it it it's been a year and i just I, the other day it was like Okay, I, I need to really change sheets and get ready for new company. And the next day, there, there they were. You know, wow, and it was that's like, so cool. it, it, you know, it, and I said to a friend of mine, I said, I, I knew that if I changed those sheets, that I would hear from this person. And <laughs> there it was. It was like, happily, happily, they were not visiting me. They were just talking, which is a good thing. But you mm. know, so many people don't understand that that. We all have these psychic abilities, but but there is there is a, a difference between intuition and psychic abilities, and and you know often people use those terms interchangeably. So, what would you say the difference actually is? Yeah, I do um, create like a little bit of a distinction between those two. So, I feel like intuition is information that we're getting about our um, our own, it's like our own um, impressions about it, like maybe information from your higher self, your own inner wisdom, your own inner knowing is um, so it's information from inside of ourselves. And psychic is when we get information from outside of our system. That means working with spirit guides like angels, departed relatives, you know, um, ascended masters or whoever you're getting your information from. It's not you. That's, that's what psychic ability is, is perceiving things outside our own frame. What is it then that connects us to the other realm, to the cosmic aspect of all of this? Where is that connection? I mean, you know, um, I think it's from our chakra. I mean, our chakras are super psychic, so you can sort of look at all of the chakras and the energy centers that you have and see how they line up with our psychic abilities. They sort of match all the clairs. And, uh, you know, we, when we open to perceiving um, uh, this, this non-ordinary world, we just start taking in more information. I, I love the, the old term ESP, extrasensory perceptions. I feel like psychics and intuitives are, are just m- more dialed in to processing way more of the, the you know, how like, you know, we, we only see like a certain part of the visible light spectrum but we know that yeah. there's ultraviolet light and infrared light like <laughs> psychics are just open to perceiving um you know beyond what a what, you know average i don't even like that word but you know because i think we're all psychic really we have to train ourselves to perceive beyond the ordinary um our ordinary senses and that's when we really start tapping into these non-ordinary um experiences yeah i think and i think it was in your last book but it may not have been, but but I know I, I I think I got this phrase from you, but I'm not sure. And, and that was that um, all mediums are psychic, but not all psychics are mediums. That's true. Yeah, uh, that is that is something that I do say. And and um, <clears throat> you know, mediums are specialists. So mediums talk are psychics who specialize in talking to dead people and people who have crossed over. So. You know, that's a specialized skill, and you have to work on that one a little bit. Um, and so there are people who really just focus on that. It's a beautiful gift. I, I'm super um, grateful to mediums. I do a lot of mediumship work myself, and I don't consider myself a medium. I say mediumship happens when I when I do it, but it's not really my, my forte. And psychics are generally, like, they're sort of generalists. 
So they're looking at um, maybe reading your past lives, reading your energy, reading your chakras, looking into your future, being looking at who you are at the level of the soul. So, I mean, I think you can be a psychic and not, um, and not be a medium. You know, it's just one of the subsets of psychic skills that we have. Oh, yeah. I mean, there, there are a ton of them. And some people can send yeah. and not receive, and some people can receive and not send, as well as mm-hmm. others. So, sure, yeah. it, it, you know, to be, a, to be a master in all of them is um, quite profound. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I, have, I have found... We can. We, we can get practice with practice. If we really open and work it, we can get there. Oh, yeah. No, I know when... Um, Every now and then I will I will get a smell that takes me back. You know, it it, mm. it absolutely just reminds me to a situation in my past that was so profound and and I can I can see it, feel it, sense it, it and then it's gone. Or or mm. taste something that was uh, that my mother used to make or something like that. Um it lets you know that there is a spirit around, but it's for me it's it's that's sort of a flighting thing so that, you know, it's, it's sort of like, whoa, that was so cool. And, you know, <laughs> and, then it, and then it was gone. <laughs> I think that's a really fascinating and underrated psychic sense, the, the sense of taste and smell. They often go together. And I really think it's because our sense of smell is the most, it's a sense that's the most closely related to our me- memory. So when we smell things, we really remember you know, and like when my grand when my grandmother comes around, I always smell the inside of her purse. She doesn't come around very often, but I can tell she's there because I can smell this sort of like like spearmint gum and her perfume and money and this lavender water that she used. It's such a unique smell. Nothing else smells like that, and it, it reminds me so strongly of her. So I feel like our ancestors, our, our beloved, you know, people who have crossed crossed over often announce their present through the sense of smell because it connects us so deeply to our memory. I think it's a really cool psychic sense and kind of an underrated one. <laughs> it is. And I've only met one other person that was really good at it. And she she was a psychic that I used to have on the show on a pretty regular basis when we did readings. And she hated peanut butter. And she just hated it. And so I always sometimes during the show – would take a spoonful of peanut butter and eat it and see if she caught it, and she caught it every single time. Wow! And and it, you know she you know she would be reading somebody and saying, Barbara, put the peanut butter away. <laughs> oh my God, that's so, and, that's so funny! I love that. Well, it, it was it was if ever you know you you know nothing like testing another psychic, but you know it was it was just so cool because. She just hated the smell of peanut butter, so you know you, you had to you had to try it. And every now and then, I would I would have um, Jeannie, who was my assistant um, co-host, I would say to her, "Eat some peanut butter and see if she catches it." And she did. It was just amazing. Wow. And and that's where she would she would um, usually when people read people, they go in on wherever they're they're. Um, strongest senses to to get the mm-hmm. information and then spread out and for her it was yeah. always smell and um wow i mean and she often you know some of the stuff she smelled it was very weird but um mm. but it was always accurate but i i think i think one of the the cool things about your book is that you you went into all the clairs and mm-hmm. i think it's important for people to realize that there are different strengths you can have, and it's rare for anybody to have all of them. I mean, I nibble at a lot of them, but I, I'm not, I wouldn't say I was exceedingly proficient in all of them. You know, every right. now and then I smell or I feel or I, and I hear, you know, I, I get a little bit of everything. But, but for people to understand all of the different ways that that this talent and this gift can manifest within your life and bring information to you is very, very profound. It isn't just yeah. psychic. Right. And I think it's important because so so often, especially these days, people have a, 
associated psychic with clairvoyance. You know, like you're unless you're a clairvoyant psychic and you're seeing things, you're not you're not psychic. You're not. It's not happening for you. And psychic, uh, the clairvoyance is really the most rare, and it does not everybody has it. So you could be having all kinds of psychic experiences, intuitive experiences, and totally dismissing them. Like, so I'll teach these psychic development classes and lead people through guided meditations where they meet their guides and all kinds of things like that. And people will say, well, I didn't see anything. And I say, well, what did you experience or what did you perceive? Because the word experience and perceive open us up to the other psychic senses. They'll say, well, I felt this in my body and I heard this and I knew this and I sensed that. But they dismissed all of that because it didn't come in the form that they were expecting, which is somehow it's not valid unless you're seeing it. And I, I really wanted people to, um, see, to try to let that go and really tune in to what psychic senses are available to them already, what is already awake inside of them. Because like you said, <clears throat> um, we start with our strongest one. So it's really good to know what your strongest one. We go into the strongest one. And then sometimes, like you said, you, I thought you said it so beautifully, we can expand once we get in there um, and experience through the other senses. So I, wanted really, I really wanted people to know um, about the other ones and not just think they're not having experiences because they're not seeing anything. Yeah, and I know when I first began a long time ago, people would say to me, well, how'd you get that? And and I would say, I just know. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have no proof, mm-hmm. but I just know this is this is accurate. And and over time, you do once you once you really understand that you've got a connection, then it's then it's easy to sort of stretch yourself out and and you know do some other exercises that will open up those other areas within you. And you know mm-hmm. there there is absolutely. Um, there is no end to the possibilities of of talents and gifts that you can open up you know, yourself up to and and utilize within your life. It does make life so much more exciting when when you have a, a little a greater a, a greater degree of insight into where stuff may be coming from and what's going on. And you know, uh, nobody's going to become Nostradamus. Um, don't think he's coming back, and but but you know you will find sometimes where <clears throat> where you're talking and suddenly you will say something that just wasn't you, and mm-hmm. you know you'll yeah. you know I, I'll step back and say oh somebody write that down that was really good I want to make sure I use that mm-hmm. someplace else, but <laughs> but you know it you know it, it's it's you you get you get going and you open up to that energy. And I think it's it's a matter of, of trusting that there is, it's sort of like um, you have to understand that something is there in order to open up to it. So, right. you know, so, so it, it's a matter of, um, it's sort of like you can't describe something unless you've experienced it. And if you are firmly convinced that you have, you know, clairsentience or clairaudience or um, clairvoyance or any of the clairs. If you investigate it and open to it, it, it really happens. But mm-hmm. but again, it's very much mm-hmm. like you said, a muscle, and it doesn't happen overnight usually. Sometimes I mean, it does, and that's what's, um, what's what I see happening more and more is these sudden psychic openings, you know. And for most people, I think their opening is kind of gradual, it's like working out, like you go every day to the gym and then three months later you're you're really fit. And many people have that experience, which I think is a really easier kind of more relaxed way to um, to have your psychic abilities turn on. But sometimes people go through these sudden psychic openings where <clears throat> it's like somebody threw a light switch on in a room that was dark before. And that, that and then you can you're having all kinds of experiences that can be quite unsettling, really unnerving. It happened very suddenly in a way that makes it hard to integrate it. And that's, um, I get a lot of, um, you know, calls from people who are looking for help because they've gone through an experience like that. And it may be like you lost somebody or you had a near-death experience or lots of people who get close to death themselves come back kind of psychic, you know, or somebody you know passed away or, or you did a lot of psychedelics, like you went and did an ayahuasca ceremony or, you know, engaged in some other psychedelics that can pop you open or, you know, 
people who have been really ill or had sudden changes in their life, these things can really open us up very quickly, and then it's quite hard, can be quite hard to integrate it and, and uns- quite unsettling. Yeah, I have a, <clears throat> a friend who is a medium, and she doesn't like to go into crowds or into cemeteries because she's just flooded with spirits wanting to talk to her. Now, I'm a medium as well, but not that kind. So that, so that you know, I I I only get them if I if I open to it, and you know, I and when I'm done doing mediumship work, I just that's it. But with her, it's it's a constant bombardment of of people who have passed over and want to tell them tell her their story and things like that. So if if one is having these kind of experiences where they're being overwhelmed by um, a gift that, that they, they kind of don't want. How do you turn it off? I think, you know, having good boundaries, like whether you're talking with a living person or a dead person, a boundary is a boundary. So once you learn how to set a boundary and say no, um, it can really help. And when I when was little, as, as a child, I really had, a, I had that problem of being very overwhelmed by psychic information and <clears throat> somebody said to me, why don't you, you know, imagine a radio or TV and I like I like the remote control because you can do a lot of things with it. You can turn it off, you can turn the volume off, you can turn it down, you can change the channel. You know, so it's some kind of um, sort of little, you know, ritual or visualization, that kind of thing that will create a boundary and a barrier around you and, and just say I'm not available, I'm not open for that right now. I'm not open for business. Sometimes I, you know, I imagine that I'm putting the close sign on the door of a shop. Like, I I just want to go to sleep right now, or I just want to go into, you know, the the whole foods and buy my vegetables. I'm closed for business. And all these things that we do, one of my friends lights a candle at the beginning, like a little tea light at the beginning of her sessions and then blows it out when the session's over. And and that's her her uh, little ritual that she does that the distinction between open for business and closed for business. So wh- when we start practicing those things and setting boundaries and creating, you know, delineations around our time, um, you know, it, it works. It That's really, true. Really and like that. I, I know if I'm doing some sort of creative work, creative work or something, I wait till I feel an energy flowing and then I jump in. I mean, there, there are times in the day when, when I am preoccupied with so many other things that somebody said to me, "Why don't you just sit down like um, Hemingway did?" And as he stood at the computer eight hours every day, whether he was writing something or not. And right. I tried to explain that that there is a a flow that mm. if you're going to be working with spiritual energy, that you want to catch that flow and and if that flow isn't flowing at that moment you know you you know do laundry um you know right. don't don't just sit and wait for it to come <laughs> and, yeah, and sooner absolutely. Later, and you know, laundry is a great thing to do because i do think we can support our psychic states by spending more and more time in the alpha brain waves the alpha uh-huh. it's sort of a light trance state that we go into oftentimes when we're doing really repetitive tasks and as we go into alpha states you that's the most psychic we are it's like right when we're falling asleep right when we're waking up when you're kind of zoning out like if you're lying you know on the ground watching the clouds go by or you're folding laundry you know doing the dishes and being in the shower so many psychics have their best psychic kids in the shower because it's such a powerful alpha activity so sometimes you can you can do this really fun exercise where you ask yourself a question Write it down in your journal and then go fold the laundry and <clears throat> see whether the um, answer comes to you as you engage in that alpha activity. And it will probably come come to you sort of an aha moment or a flash of insight or, like you said, that knowing, you know, that just somehow it just pops into your mind and you know. Um, and that, that can be a really great way. That's why meditation is helpful. That's why guided meditations are helpful um, because going into that alpha state is when we are the most psychic. Well, and the alpha state is when, um, especially animal whispers go, um, when yeah. they, they are more able to um, 
to communicate when they're in alpha with with the uh, animals that they're trying to work with, and uh, yeah, it's it's and and there's so many different ways. There's not just a set. I mean, certainly, meditation is a great way to get to alpha, or staring at clothes, or you know, um, staring at clouds. But at the same time, um, <clears throat> I have found for me when I weed the garden, I'm in alpha. Um, mm-hmm. When I'm I love that one knit. When I'm knitting or crocheting or something like that, mm-hmm. I go into alpha, and and it's it's sort of like that energy in that particular time frame um, is very special to me because if I'm making something for someone else, I know that you know pure spiritual energy is going into whatever it is I'm creating, and and hopefully they will treasure whatever it is I'm, I'm giving them. Mostly it's baby blankets, which which I think are magical. So. Um, yeah. I, I think I think people have to understand. You know, not everybody under not everybody has an understanding of what the different levels of um, of, of of our energetic field are. So, I mean, we're talking alpha. I know there's alpha, beta, gamma, delta, theta. Um, so, mm-hmm. if you want let, let's explain a little bit about the different levels of um, awareness that, that our brain can settle into. So they understand. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's such a good point. Um, and and there are those levels that, and this is like, um, ooh, stuff. This is like science, you know, like mm-hmm. brainwave. Our brain, when we go into certain different states of consciousness, creates a different electrical wave. They can, you know, put monitors on your head and figure out um, where what wave you're in. And the beta brainwave is the one that you're, where we spend the most time in. That sort of the thinking, you know, when you're thinking actively um, in cognition or learning, um, that's sort of where we spend most of our time. And the one just below that is this alpha wave. That's the one where we are the most intuitive, most creative, most psychic. Then below that is a theta. Most of the time when you're in theta, you're in either sleeping or you're in a deep relaxative, relaxation state, like you're getting a really amazing energy healing session or you're, you know, in a deep meditative state, and that theta one is where we have the most physical feeling. And then there's the delta, the slowest brainwave that you're really only ever there when you're lights out, sound asleep. Um, we don't remember, we're, we don't have any co- sort of conscious awareness of ourselves when we're in the delta. And then the gamma brainwave is a high frequency, higher than the beta uh, brainwave, but it's when we're in a flow state. So when we're really in, um, you know, maximum problem solving, maximum, um, like, you know, you're not aware of time passing. You're it's like a state of brilliance, actually, um, that people get into, and you're also very, very intuitive and connected when you're in that um, in that gamma brainwave. Uh, and if you've ever been doing like a creative endeavor, and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm having so much fun, and time is passing, like we lose track of time passing. That's probably the the gamma. Um, so th- those are the brainwave states, and we can. This is what professional psychics like me and like you, Barbara, do: is we learn how to shift our brainwave states at will. So you know, for me, I've been working as a as a professional psychic since I was 19. That's 40 years ago, really, um, almost 40 years ago. And um, and I I know you can't be like, well, I'm sorry, I know you waited three months for your appointment. I'm not feeling it today, so it's not happening. We can't do that. We have to. We have to learn how to shift our brainwave states to will. So when a client comes in, and I learn we, we can do what we need to do. And I learned how to do that because my amazing hippie parents took me to silver mind control. Now it's called the silver method. But when I did it, it was called silver mind control back in the late 70s, early 80s. <laughs> when I was still in high school. <laughs> and they're, they're all about this brainwave shift. And they taught me um, – how to shift my brain when I stayed at will and going to an alpha state at will. And it was such incredible training for me as a psychic. I, it was invaluable, really. Oh, yeah. I A long time ago, well, over 30 years ago, um, I painted a deck of cards that were hand-painted mandalas. And wow. um, I, yeah, it's the Cosmic Deck of Initiation. They just got reissued, actually, along with a, cool. a huge handbook. But but when I was painting them, I would um, get up at like seven o'clock in the morning. I would I, I taught school, so I would go to school and teach. I would pick my son up and I would go to whatever little league game or whatever. But by four in the afternoon, I was painting and I would paint until four o'clock in the morning. 
and then I would get an hour or so of sleep. And that was all done in gamma because uh-huh. I was energized, I was excited, it was I wasn't um to be honest with you, I don't remember painting them, but I know I they came through me, not of me, I guess is the best way to put it. But that went on right. for nine months. And um uh-huh. It was probably the most energizing, exciting nine months of my life. And Mm -hmm. uh, even to this day, if I am going to be doing something that is really, really creative and that I'm excited about, um, I click in almost immediately and I'm off and running. And time gets away from me, you know, and, and, Mm -hmm. and I suddenly will realize, oh, when I stand up, I hurt. I must have been here for eight hours and, you know, wow. and so, so it's, I think you do get familiar with how to, my word, click in and, and, you know, it's something that you do learn, but your book is, is so amazing because it's not, it, it's, it's for all levels of people who are on the journey and it doesn't mean just because you, you go through everything doesn't mean that you you have to then become a practicing psychic and do psychic fairs or readings it's it's how do you use this energy to enhance the quality of the life that you're living and understand more about what the universe is sending you on a very constant level of 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 uh, a wavelength that that it mm-hmm. it's meant to help you enhance your life now if you want to become a psychic or a medium or whatever you know, certainly go that direction, but but this this book is for everybody to expand the ability to use the magic and the tools that they they came with. It's it's sort of like um, you are a new car, and you have all sorts of um, extras, and and you can either go through the handbook and learn what the extras are, or leave those buttons alone and never touch them your entire life. But mm. but to utilize them just enhances everything you do and it enhances your ability to share energy and insight with other people and and you know and and if you are a practicing person it will just it will just expand the talents that you've already got oh such a great analogy barbara i love that the car with the buttons um thank you for sharing that that was so beautiful um and i think it's absolutely true yeah and and i really do think there are a couple of reasons why Sometimes people ask me, like, well, why do I want to open my psychic ability? Like, what's what's the point of doing that? And I think, um, like, you know, helping us, it can help us really navigate in our own lives. And it's been a rocky couple of years. We've had to let go of a lot of our old ways of being and find new ways. And I know, um, you know, when we're in turbulent times, like, really being able to tune into our intuition can definitely help us navigate because your soul, your guide, your higher self is always talking to you, trying to show you the right path. And maybe through dreams, signs and omens, and hunches, and nudges all the way so we receive psychic information. And so it can really help us live a more soulful life, find our life purpose, find our path in life in a, in a powerful way. And I think that most people find a way to help other people too. Even if you're not a professional psychic, you may be um, bringing that, skill into whatever you're already doing and then using that to help other people too. Well, the the more you understand yourself, the more um, empathetic you are with other people. And, Mm -hmm. you know, empathy is is an amazing gift and tool. Certainly, certainly um, mediums are very empathetic. But, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's all of the different talents and skills are wonderful, but, but, um, Everybody has the potential for all of them. So, so you know, just saying, well, I, I have this gift and not this gift, it's not true. You've got them all. And it, mm-hmm. it depends on how hard you want to work on developing them so that, so that um, you know, you can utilize them to, to expand your own reality. I mean, reading other people is there's a tremendous, tremendous responsibility to reading other people. Yeah. And uh, I just I caution people because you don't. It's not our right to interfere with anybody else's development or or life's purpose. 
um, you know, you can give them spiritual suggestions on how to work through whatever it is they're going through, certainly. But but to to make choices and decisions for another person, um, I think I think that's against our prime directive. I agree, and I I talk a lot in my book about ethics, you know, and what our ethical responsibility is as people, as psychics and sensitives. And I think, um, sadly, like a lot of people don't consider that or don't get trained in it and, you know, pick pick up some bad habits from watching paranormal TV or watching psychics on TV because I think we really need to be very careful about what we say and who we say it to. We need to be um, not... um, Jumping on people, I call it the psychic hit and run, where you yeah. um, blurt, blurt out psychic information without having the person's permission. You know that uh-huh. um, you know we need to know we're not always right, and you know the we we have our own you know experiences or connections with people that color the information that we're getting, and and to really be mindful of planting positive seeds people and not negative and I've done a lot of cleanup sessions for people who have been uh, run over by by bad psychics you know who really oh, harmed yeah. them and I don't I don't think they meant to they I'm going to give them credit and say they didn't mean to because they didn't understand what they were doing or the power you know um, like you said the responsibility we have for leading other people and I, I totally agree with that um, we, we need to be super careful um, on, on what we say and how we say it and when we say it. Oh, geez, yeah, because I, I know way back when I started in, and I go back about 50 years, I remember reading somebody, and she asked a question about her relationship, and I, you know, I, I gave her what I got, but I, I slammed her with it. And, you know, it was, it was, um, it was harsh, and and mm-hmm. it was well it was true it was still harsh and it i shouldn't have slammed her with it you know i i was feeling cocky and i you know i just let it rip and i found that shortly thereafter um i experienced the exact same thing in my life mm-hmm. and it was wow. it was hurtful and it was awful and it was devastating, and I I saw the I saw the comparison right away, and from that moment on, I I, I made a promise that I would never say anything to anyone that I would not lovingly receive myself. Mm-hmm. So it it yeah. it changed the way I give information if I see an illness or something, I will say something gently like, oh, wow, it looks like you're going to be going to the doctor soon for a checkup. You know, just something yeah. easy, you know. And I say, like, I'm like, have you seen your doctor lately? You know, I'll be like, hey, <laughs> like maybe some t- you know, maybe a good time to attend to your health right now. You know, I say something like that. But, you know, we don't want to say something, you know, that might plant seeds, you know, um, Oh, you you know, you, you've got cancer or something like that. We would never say that to anybody. We would never, you know, I never, people say, don't tell me when I'm going to die. And I'm like, I would never, I don't see that information, <laughs> first of all. And if, and if I did, I would never share it because what if I was wrong? Like that can just, there's certain information that we can give people that can really, you know, tangle people up. And I, I tell a story in my book about um, one of my students who, was getting her hair. She lived in a really small town, and she her hairdresser. And hairdressers are, are so often totally psychic and sensitive, seems to me. But oh yeah, she you know she the hairdresser was giving her this like at the top of her voice in this crowded salon in a really small town of this like what was wrong with her kid and what was wrong with her marriage and all this really personal information. And she was right, but my client said she felt just totally violated. Um, to have all of that exposed and gossiped about in the middle of town. And she cut off her friendship with that person. And that person was just really expecting, the hairdresser was really just expecting to be told how, what a great psychic she was, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> so we, I mean, she was accurate, but it was so, it was cool actually. And, and not intentionally, I think, I don't think she intended that, but she wasn't thinking about the ramifications that 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 was going to have on 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 my clients. So, 
we just have to be really, you know, um, and I really like, that's why I don't like to hit and run. Like if you, if you get something about somebody, my, like my rule is I, don't I, I have a don't ask don't tell policy like um in, if you don't ask me I'm not going to say anything <laughs> unless it, it, you know if I'm in a client session then and even then when I'm in a client session I'll often ask like well past life is coming up do you want to hear it or your mother is here do you want to talk to her I never actually assume people want to talk to their mother I mean lots of people don't want to talk to their mother <laughs> you know yeah. even when their mother's dead like I'm not going to make that decision you know I ask and um, and so we have to be really um, careful that we don't spring something. And I just ignore, like, I see things, I forget about it, I ignore it, I put it in, you know, file it away. And, you know, my children, my friends, I, I'll just say, like, look, I'm, if I see anything, I'm, I'm not going to tell you unless, unless you ask. And, I'm, I, and they hardly ever do, especially my kids. They never do. But, you know, um, well, I, 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 I think we have to kind of choose, like, do we want a personal oh, yeah. relationship with people or do we want to become the 24 hour, you know, psychic hotline? That's, yeah, that's, that's tough. I know that um, a long time ago I did an exchange with an astrologer and I, you know, read him with my cards and then he did an, you know, an astrology thing on me and he said, well, you're going to die in six months and we'll miss you. And I said, what? well, isn't, what? isn't there another way of interpreting that? Like, you know, a plan is going to die or an aspect of my life is going to die. He said, nope, your heart's going to give out. And <gasps> that was like that was like 35 or 40 years ago. And, Ooh, and now, now much as I knew that he was, he was reading from his own level of consciousness, his ego was involved, I mean, I knew all of that. But for mm. six months I went to every doctor I could find. And, and at the end of the six months I did have some sur- a surgery, and and I was almost I, I was fearful that I wasn't going to wake up, and um, but I did. But it taught me a lesson that that what you say plants a seed. When someone sits down and spreads their life in, out on your table, you see where their warts and 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 their you know whatever's are, and it's up to you to give them you know, the best positive information you can for them to go forward in their life. I mean, you don't go to a, I mean, most people don't go to a psychic. They don't go to a psychic and say, my life is wonderful, everything's magical, what do you see in my future? Usually there's an issue that they're working on and they want insight. Yeah, they're coming because they have a problem, that's for sure, yeah. And wow. and so it was, But but he taught me a great lesson, I am so grateful he taught me that lesson. I have not sent him a thank you note, but um, <laughs> I'm not, I am not that spiritual. And, you know, <laughs> next life maybe. But but I learned something from that experience. It was just phenomenal. It was like it, it, be, it, it really, you know, right in, right in my face, you know. Um, he planted a seed and I couldn't get rid of it. And I suffered with it for six months. So, um, and, and I think a lot of times we experience those things to, to teach us that, you know, when, when, you're, when you're dealing with another person's life, you know, be mm-hmm. gentle with it. Give them loving, positive information. No matter how crappy right. things are, you can always find something positive to give them to hang on to. And that's the purpose of the reading. Absolutely. And I, I was so young when I started, I was 19 and I, I um, quickly realized that I didn't have enough um, skills to actually handle the situations that were coming up in the sessions I was doing. So I went back to school and became a therapist, you know, and um, found that super helpful to help me like, you know, cause somebody would cry and I'd be like, I don't know. What to, I'd be like, oh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> Stop doing that. Well, when, you know, <clears throat> then I learned when some, I developed you know, therapy you know, skills, and it was easier. Like I knew what to do. I needed. I knew I needed more training. And it oh, was really yeah, helpful. Yeah. And well, when I painted that the deck of the oracle cards, um, there well, there was a little white book in it, but there was no handbook. And just this year, I've I reissued the deck. 
and I wrote the handbook, and the handbook is like 400 pages. And I realized as I was writing it that that I now had 30 years under my belt of wisdom gathering and, you know, insight, and so that the material that went into the handbook for how to use the deck, um, I couldn't have written 30 years ago. So so it's it's understanding that, you know, we are gathering and we are learning as we go along and especially on the mm-hmm. spiritual journey, you know, no matter what you what no matter what area you want to focus on or develop or or you know, expand on, it adds it adds to the wisdom that you have inside that you can apply to the sharing that you do with other people. And it it makes you a better person. It, it enhances yeah. relation, relationships and family situations, and it just it 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 so totally enhances everything around you in your world. And you don't have to become a practitioner; you just have to realize that it enhances the life that you're living, and and that radiates out in, into you know everybody around you, so that you create a, a glow that other people. Um, can can draw from and and learn from themselves, and you don't have to be a teacher. You just have to live your belief system, and by living your belief system, you enhance the world all around you. That's beautifully said, and I I feel like it, for me, my journey's really been about like doing all, staying humble, you know, and um, being of service, and um, continuing to do all that I can to raise my level of consciousness, my own consciousness. And like what you were just saying reminds, reminds me of that. It's like when we raise our consciousness and we come from a higher vibe, a more joyful, loving vibration, um, we, we are a huge impact on other people. There's something that's really contagious about that in a good way. Um, and I, I think that like one of my early psychic teachers told me that um, psychic development is a byproduct of spiritual growth. And our job was to be on a spiritual growth path and psychic would open up. And I, I always felt that seemed always really right to me. And sometimes I see people who just focus on the psychic development and don't do the personal and spiritual growth. And they really can get themselves into some problems. You know, they, um, they sort of choose money or power um, along uh-huh. that path and it can kind of take them down into a dark, an ego, you know take them down into a dark a dark path. Um Oh yeah. And well yeah. I I I used I, I used to do for a long time I did a meditation group every Friday night and at one point I heard people saying, Well I'm more involved I'm more evolved than my husband so I need to divorce him because he's not as evolved as I am. And you know, I just kinda looked at her and said you know, I, I don't know how you determined who was more evolved, but, you know, his silence could be a more evolved person being patient with you. Did you ever mm-hmm. think of that? <laughs> and she said, but but he, he never says anything. And I said, well, sometimes our egos get in the way and don't allow other people to share with us. And, and you know, I said, I have no idea who's more evolved. I said, the only thing that I have ever gotten when I've been trying to figure out how do you know how evolved you are or where you are, it's sort of like at the moment of death, you step into the elevator and you you take a look real quick to see what floor you're on <laughs> before it goes anywhere. And just, 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 just hope you're not in the basement. But you know, it's, it's kind of, I you know, I I I often, I often you know say you know as as far as evolution goes, I assume that the dandelion is more evolved than me, and that that way I don't get in any trouble. That's a good perspective. I like that too. And I I always sort of look at like how how happy, how joyful, how loving, how humble, how much in service. You know, and, and so often the people who are like, this is my last lifetime. I'm definitely, you know, evolving. I'm 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 not I'm done being here. I I often think that's wishful thinking because it's really hard to be here, you know. And um, so often the real the real enlightened ones don't make a big song and dance about it. They're just kind of quietly, 
in the corner being of service to other people, you know? Well, I've got the answer for that one. Oh, oh, tell me. What do you think? So I I got hit by that a lot of times, and... I used to I used to challenge it and say, well, now really, and and I said I always say to someone who says that to me, you're absolutely right. Your personality will never again walk this planet. Mm-hmm. However, your That's spirit may have, your spirit will yeah, have another planet. idea. So yeah. your spirit's going to come back, but your personality is not. And in some cases, maybe that's a good idea. So right. That's a good one. I, I'm going to borrow that one if you don't mind because I think it's a beautiful, great one. Totally true. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I've mean, i had people that I had one lady come to me and she had a, a notebook full of, of certificates of classes that she had taken and she slammed it down on the table and she said, I've taken all of these workshops and I'm no further ahead than I ever was. And I, I said, you got nothing out of all of this? She said, I got nothing out of all of this. I said, no, you got a lot of certificates here. Um, are you practicing any of it? And she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, you learned something from each of these, so how are you applying them to your life? And I can't imagine if, you're, if you are actually applying all of the wisdom that you gathered from all of these classes that you, you can't possibly say you're not going anywhere. And she said, oh, Well, you know, there there are ways of growing and learning, and there are ways of growing and learning. Some people take yeah. workshops and stuff like that, but but the reality is, you are exposed to something. Are you going to absorb it? Are you going to grow from it? Are you going to use it? Does it enhance you? And and yeah. if it's just you know, well, no, I spent you know three days and two nights, and now I'm I'm a shaman, and and when that one hit me, I said, don't ever tell a shaman that you're a shaman because you'll get leveled. Shaman yeah. don't get certificates. They are, and, and they and they don't take a title. They are given one. So, you know, be careful where you throw that around. She said, well, I, I'm going to start a practice. And I said, well, you, you go right ahead. I, and, and I would love to see how you do. Because I'm very interested with you know what you've learned and how you're going to apply it, and the kind of following that you'll get. And three years later, I saw her, and she said, "You know, nobody signed up, and nobody." I said, "Well, what happens is, you in your life and in your practice, you attract people to you who are impressed by what your life looks like." and the wisdom that you can share about your life. And she said, well, that's nobody's business. And I said, well, um, what are you doing now? And she said, well, I took a class in Tarot, and now I do Tarot readings. So it's fun. I mean, it's fun. Yeah, we'll have to start somewhere. I'm, like, happy for the people. I, I You know, I see that on TikTok, too. Like, I, you know, the TikTok psychics or you know, not the young people, and I, I never want to discourage people from, you know, feel it, if you feel a call to be a healer or you're psychic, you have psychic ability that opened up. But I, I do think, you know, um, it, it is a bit of a, a, a beginner's um, stance in a way, like, you know, and, and that's what I mean about being continuing to be, to learn and grow, to, like you said, to apply it to yourself, to do your own inner work. And I, I find that the healers and the psychics and the Reiki people that have the longest line out the door are the ones that have been, done the most work on themselves and, you know, have are common people and happy and prosperous, you know, in their own life because our clients can feel it. Your clients can feel whether you are in a position to, to you know, if you're a few steps ahead of them or a couple miles down the road or not, you know. And not, yeah. not, not that we're perfect, but, you know, there, it, it, there is sort of like we can only go with our clients as deep as we've been inside our own self. So when, and people feel that on a very subconscious level, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, and I tell people that if they're going into a psychic fair or something like that, to take a look 
and go to the happiest one there. Yeah, because great advice. because because information comes through the psychic, and and if someone is having trouble in their own life and in their own relationships or whatever, then then whatever comes through them is shadowed by their experience. Mm-hmm. So so you, yeah. you look for the happy ones and and that's where you go. Um I, I'm not I'm not a favor of psychic fairs and yet it's a great training experience. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean I I did it for a number of years and you know, every fifteen minutes a bell read rang and I got another person in front of me and and it was wonderful for learning on how to click in and click yeah. out. And it was wonderful for yeah, learning yeah. how to how to shift, you know, person to person to person to person, and not have overflow. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know one. I know one woman who was a very good psychic. Tried out for the the fair that I was working in, and the guy who ran it just sent her to everybody so that everybody could get a a, a feeling as to how she worked and stuff. And the bell rang, and she sat down, and I. She said, "Do you have any questions?" And I said, "No, just give me what you get." And she said, "Okay." And so she meditated for ten minutes. <laughs> and before you knew it, the bell <laughs> rang, and she said, "But I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not done." I said, "You learn. You learn." It's. it's yeah. Um. But it's. But you know, I think it's important for people to understand too that the term psychic. Everybody is psychic, and. Psychic being psychic is a stepping stone on the spiritual pathway. So mm-hmm. that so that being a psychic, being a Reiki master, being a spiritual advisor, being um, being a, a, a mystic, or or being an empath, or being they're all stepping stones, and they're not the final stone. They're not the final step. So that it's a matter of you you perfect an area where you you feel is you are proficient in, and then you open yourself to other areas. It's not just, I can read cards really, really well, and I'm I'm happy and satisfied with being here, but that, but, but what about your own spiritual development? Where are you, right. are you constantly growing? And I think your, right. your book, it, you know, it underlines that. It's, it's, it's a growth process on a spiritual journey, and you're never finished. You're, there's always right. something more to learn, and and yeah. you know to expand into, and, and um, I mean, I've had a, a great deal of fun with dowsing, and um, actually have found stuff that that I had lost with the dowsing, and you know mm-hmm. I, again another talent that 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 you can play with, and and it it enhances your life. It it it's it's actually it's it's fun. And I think that that the spiritual pathway is when you skip down singing and dancing. And while there are very serious aspects of it, unless you have the joy, it it doesn't take root. That's just me. Absolutely, I I agree with you, and I um and I've been you know like everyone through hard things in my life and use those things as as point to grow and deepen in my own self so I know ne- I've never stopped learning and growing and I, I'm also a huge fan of dowsing my grandparents were from Vermont which is where dowsing as we know it kind of came from there's a lot of dowsers there and I in my book I teach people how to use a pendulum to um, confirm whether or not you're getting your psychic hits are accurate because I think a lot of times when we're working on our psychic we're sort of new and we're trying to figure it out one of the problems we have is we don't know how to tell how do we trust whether it's real what we're getting is real psychic hit or if it's just the stuff we make up in our own heads or our imagination and I think like getting a pendulum and getting a yes no I don't know out of a pendulum can help us like if let's say in the middle of you're sleeping in the middle of the night you feel a spirit in your room and you think it's that Uncle Fred but you're not sure like you think it's that Uncle Fred and you're like yeah it's that Uncle Fred and then then Five minutes later, you're like, what if, it, what if I'm wrong? What if it, what if it's something scary? What if, you know, how do I know I'm right? We kind of freak ourselves out and we go down the rabbit hole of doubt. And that's where you get your pendulum out and you're like, was it a spirit? And you get a yes, no, I don't know. And if you get a yes, you're like, okay, I can trust myself. And 
so we do, you know, we can also do that with partner practice. And when I teach psychic development classes on, you know, in, online and in person, we do partner practice back and forth so the person you're talking to can give you that confirmation. But using a dowsing tool like a pendulum, you can use dowsing rods, you can use muscle testing, any of those things will work to help us um, confirm for ourselves in the moment whether it's right. And I think that really gives us confidence and really helps us develop, develop the skills like, oh, when I feel this way, you know, when the information comes in this way, I feel it in my belly and I feel this tingling down my spine and it, it's like this, it's always right. Then we um, eventually we don't need that pendulums a little bit like training wheels that we exactly. use as we're learning and, we do, and then we get to the point where we don't need it. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And I think I love pendulums. I think they're great. But um you, I I would caution people to not become a fanatic. I had yeah. somebody once that literally would use the pendulum on the menu when she went out to eat or she was choosing a card for somebody in the store she would have and, and the pendulum lived under her pillow and she she became the um inspiration for something I wrote um, for my website, and it was Tool to a Crutch, a Slippery a slippery Slope, because she wouldn't yeah. do anything without the pendulum. And, and yeah. you know, you, I, you I kind of have to. It's, it's, and, it's and then you panic when if you, people do that. We don't, want to, we don't I, want to give up our power. We don't want to, you know, give up our sovereignty. Like, where are the captains of our own lives? And we need to maintain that power, and so we don't want to, um, push our choices off on whether it, it abdicate our choice. Our free will choice is one of our most powerful gifts as humans, you know? And so we don't want to give that to your angels or your pendulum or whatever tools we have. Um, we need to, you know, hold on to our power of choice and take full responsibility for our choices and, and reap the benefit of that power because it's an incredible power. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I love pendulums and 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 the dowsing rods. I, I taught a class in it, and I I had, I think I had about two dozen silver dollars in my yard, and um, I told everybody, do not go into any of the flower beds, but you can reach in, and I said, you're looking for a silver dollar, and um, within 15 minutes, they had found all of them. Wow. And they were some of them were buried. I mean, so you know, they they it was it, it is it, it's a tool that that has been used, you know, for water witching for 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 water for my God, generations and decades, and and it, it does work. It's it's sort of like another tool, and you know, having having a whole tool built full of tools is a is a great idea. Um, I did want to talk to you too a little bit about you went into the different levels with spirit guides and and relatives that had passed over and then ascended masters and the different levels there to the um to the spiritual realm and I thought it'd be cool for you to kind of get into that information here. Yeah, do you mean the the map? The map of Yes. Of the other world. Yep. Yeah, it's so cool. And I I mean I'm pretty structured for a psychic like I like a method a process you know a map and I think I think that a lot of times what happens is when we start having um, psychic experiences we just think it's all random there's nothing that's connected like we have no control over it and I like this kind of like analogy being street smart where we are you know when we're street smart we can travel safely through the psychic world we just need to have a map a guide we had we have uh-huh. have some our wits about us and have our some common sense, you know, and then we can stay out of trouble. So I created this map. It's sort of a blend of the old Theosophical Society had a map sort of similar to that, and then I I I over the years um, changed it to sort of fit my own experiences and the experiences of all the students that I've had over the years. And I just think that it's helpful to know how to get where we want to go and also how to stay out of trouble. So I divide the um, the world, the psychic world, into three realms: the lower realm, the middle realm, and the upper realm. And and as and a lot of psychics have a sweet spot. Like if you're a medium, you're that's a, the middle realm, um, and sometimes the upper realm. Um, and I, I have a lot of shamanic training, so I work with 
shamans a lot, and so I have a sort of sweet spot in the shamanic realm, and I do a lot of shamanic work in my practice with people. And some people are really upper realm people. They're re- you're an angel person, or you're really like kind of a starseed kind of person, and your your guides are very high level off planet, you know, beings of pure consciousness. So we all have a sweet spot, but the truth is we all need to know um, our way around that map because you just never know what you're gonna. You're, you know, what you're going to run into, especially if you're seeing clients, like I'm not um, particularly, I don't specialize in mediumship, but I always say mediumship happens. I do mediumship all the time because it's necessary. And so we, as we have that map and we can understand, it helps, it helps teach the skill of discernment. And discernment is the ability to know where you are, what's going on, and what type of spirit you're dealing with. And the map just helps us identify what's happening it's not all random. There is a rhyme to it, a rhyme and a reason to it. Well, so what would be the angelic room? I mean, how would you how would you know where you are? I mean, is it it's it's not like going in an elevator and opening the door and saying, "Nope, not here," and going up another floor? Or how does one determine where one is? Actually, I think that's a great method and sometimes it really works so one of the things you can do is set your intention it's a great analogy get on the elevator and push angel world and see you know set your intention to visit angel world and go up you want to go up you know you know we don't want to go sideways we're going a lot of new psychics who who um, are just opening up they're going more sideways and they're hitting the astral plane um and that is sort of the kind of bad neighborhood in the spiritual realm we don't want to do that and um, a lot of spiritual practices like Ouija boards and, you know, take us to the astral plane. Um, they're not, and, we, and it's not always a bad idea, but it's just a place where you need to have your wits about you and, and maybe not pull your guides from the astral dimension there. You want to go higher and hit the angelics or go into the lower realm and hit shamanic guides, and power animals and things like that. But I think a lot of it has to do with where we set our intention. And also how high frequency, you know, whether we can shift our frequency up high enough, that's also a big part of it. And a thing like the elevator is a great analogy to help us um, set our intention and, and ask, you know, for where we want to go. Well, you, you brought something up that, that has been brought up over and over and over. Parker Brothers has been putting out the Ouija board for, half a century or more, and, um, you know, television shows and movies have have all, you know, gone into the, you know, don't play with it, it can can get you in trouble, and I I can, I I will admit that, um, you know, when I was in high school, you know, I did play with the Ouija board with my friends, you know, it was really cool, and then then we we got freaked out. We do. That's what happened. And then we got... I mean, it, it, it was, it. What was really funny was, and we got freaked out, and so we threw it away. And mm. three or four days later, it turned up back again. And um, we finally burned it. But but wow. it, it, did, it, it did come back several times. And my mother said, why do you keep pulling this out of the garbage? And I said, I don't, and neither does my sister. So, you know, it just was, you know, we hit something that was, that was, not good and you know we burned it finally but it's 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 something that um i would warn people about because at first it's very great and it's it's sometimes quite accurate but then whatever is helping the the plankton to to move um does not have good intentions and then you you get you get destructive type suggestions and things like that so it's not mm-hmm. a good it's not a it's not something to play with it's not a toy and no it's um, not even it though they sell it in a toy sex they sell it in the toy section and you know in bookstores and toy shops people think it's a toy and um it's it's really responsible for a lot of hauntings and a lot of problems it's that if we use it over and over again especially if you're very psychic and you have a lot of latent psychic ability and you're using it it tends to open up a you know, kind of a permanent portal in your house to this lower astral, the lower astral realm, and that's where all the kind of dangerous and mischievous spirits hang around, so we don't want those beings hanging around. So many people have experienced pretty frightening hauntings after they played with them, so 
definitely want to know, and that's where the map also can come in handy is to help, help us know that that's not the neighborhood we want to go to when we're over there in psychic world. Well, that's true. And, you know, it's if you do something like a meditation circle on a regular basis, then then you're opening yourself up to a kinder, gentler type of spirit that that will come through. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and, of course, and I always say, like, know, asking, you know, may the highest available guides, you know, the highest guides available to me this moment come through. Angels, masters, prophets, and saints only. Christ consciousness and above only. Like, you know, there are things we can say that sort of set our boundaries, set our barriers, and set our intention that sort of filter out the psychic riffraff, you know. Um, and we don't want to get those lower astral because they're, they're like, they often pretend to be they'll tell you like oh i'm jesus christ and you know and we want to listen to how they're speaking to us do they flatter you do they fluff you up do they cajole you do they threaten you do they make they you know make you feel bad Do they tell you to do bad things how do you feel about them when they come through they can look good on the surface but make you feel yucky on the inside <clears throat> so we need to really pay attention to all of that <clears throat> real guides always have your best interest at heart they're not going to make promises they can't deliver. They're not going to tell you they're going to fix all your problems or get everything go away or promise you that you're going to be rich and famous, like all those kinds of things, real guides. It's more that they're going to help show you the way, but they don't do it for you. They don't interfere with other people's free will. They don't take your karma from you or, um, you know, totally clean up your messes for you. If they, but That's not how we learn as humans. We need to do it ourselves and learn. So your guides are like, more like cheerleaders or, or advisors, like, well, have you thought about doing it this way? And, you know, <laughs> you, they're, they're like, we know you've done that eight million times. It hasn't really worked for you. What about this option, you know? Um, they're more um, really like the word guide. The guide doesn't do it for you. I would say like the midwife doesn't, the midwife doesn't have the baby for you. Um, you still have to have your own baby. But, you know, it's really hard to do without a midwife. The midwives are there to help support us. And that's what real guides are like. And if you're pulling in spirits from the astral plane, they're, they're really like flattery. And then they get, they, you're, the, you're the most amazing human ever. And you were, you know, Nefertiti in your past life. And then when you start, you know, sort of like an abusive relationship, you know, it kind of can be like that. And so we, we need to like really practice our discernment and, and choose being from the higher realms, definitely. Oh, absolutely. I, I envision it, and everybody envisions it differently, but I envision my guys as a boardroom, and there's a big mm-hmm. conference table, and they sit around, and they talk about me, which is flattering. And, oh, my and God, that's it, so funny. Mine is, like that, mine is almost the same thing. I call them the committee. Oh, okay. And it, that's so, yeah. And there's 13 of them, or there's really 12 of them. And, and I'm my my higher self is the 13th. And they're I call them the committee, and that's what they look like. And they're kind of funny. They're um, my guys are a little bossy, um, but they're funny. They have a funny sense of humor, and um, they're super loving. And you know, oh yeah, um, yeah, well, I love them. Every every now and then, you know, I you know how you read the signs, and you and you finally say. Oh, I know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. I know, you know, it, and I, I basically almost say, you know, you guys, you know, I got it. I'll take it from here. And at which points I hear frustration and the door slams and they've all gone off to play golf. And on the door it says, when you screw up, give us a call. And, mm. you know, and, and I always screw up when I decide to steer for myself. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know, then I reassemble them when I've when I've messed up enough so that I'm pretty sure I need help. And, you know, the, they're very good. They aren't they aren't judgmental. It's like this is where I am and then okay, let's let's start pulling things together and, you know, and, and it works well, but man, I've heard that door slam a number of times and I know what happens when that door slams. <laughs> oh, that's totally funny. I love that. So how do That's people m- meet their guides? You know, I think doing a guided meditation is really a great way to do it. Um, and, you know, <clears throat> get into a meditative state, get into that alpha state, and then at, set your intention that you want to meet them, ask for them to come forward. 
and you know then pay attention to because they they really wait for our invitation like please come forward highest level guides available to me is one that come towards me and then you wait and see like do you see somebody are you feeling something maybe it doesn't look like a person but looks like a colored ball, ball of light or it feels you can't see anything, but you just hear something or you know somebody's there with you, you feel it. So we, once we do that, we want to expand our awareness into all of our psychic senses, see what we're perceiving. And then I, I always, you know, ask a series of questions. I always call it name, rank, and serial number. It's kind of I'm kidding around a little bit, but I want to know, like, do they have a name? Will they share it with me? What is their function? Are they, are they a protector guide, a teacher guide, a healer guide? How is the best way... To, to communicate with me like how, how are they coming forward is there anything I can do to facilitate that communication make it easier and do they have a message you know what's what 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 is the message and then I often will ask for a sign at the end of that like okay if you're for real then I want to see a sign I want to see a sign sometimes I ask for a specific sign sometimes I kind of leave it open to them show me in the next 24 hours that you're the real deal you know and I think it's important to sort of ask them to prove their, their, um, you know, who they really are. And um, we want to make sure we also that it feels good, that they feel good and loving and kind. And then, you know, we just, we have to, it's really like a relationship that develops over time. So if you continue to work with that guide on a regular basis, check in with them. Um, maybe like if you really love, I'm a big fan of the Oracle card deck. So if you really love angels, get a deck of, and you want to talk to them, get a deck of angel cards and pull the angel cards or uh-huh. get a deck that has a lot of different kinds of guides in it. So you can um, see, and you, like every time you pull the card, you, there's a hundred cards in that deck and you pull the same three cards every single time, you know, that's probably, those are your guides, you know? Um, oh yeah. And, and it takes a little time to like build a relationship um, like any relationship, it takes time and communication to build it to a point of trust. I think the other part, the other thing that, that you had in your in your book that I was that I was delighted to see is the power animals, and um, mm-hmm. and I think also the fact that you 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 went into you know don't be alarmed if if the power animal you attract is, is you know, not a unicorn or a lion. It could be as much as an ant, or it could be a, a it could be an angleworm. I mean, it and you mm-hmm. you go into just if you look at what that 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 animal um, symbolizes, it it makes greater sense to you as far as. Um, you know, what it is that you were working on at that particular point in time. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of times we can have kind of adverse reactions. Like, I I have a power animal that's a shark, and I've always been terrified of sharks. I grew up in New England. There's sharks all over the place, you know, here. And, um, oh, yeah. I, 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 was on, I was on Martha's Vineyard, the year they filmed, but the movie Jaws, I'm, like, really scared of sharks. So it was <laughs> um, really, like, you know, um, hard for me to have. I'm like, oh no, nothing, anything but a shark. I'm like, it's, I'm the most afraid of that, you know, of anything in the whole world. And it took me a long time to really understand that shark, the medicine of shark is laser focus, power, you know, psychic protection, um, like really going after what you want, having the energy and power to go to go for what you want, to be unafraid um, in that process. And then I started appreciating them. I still don't really want to, like, cuddle with them in the water, um, but no. <laughs> I appreciate the medicine that I have. And a lot of times we are afraid. Maybe snake is your power animal, and that's really all about transformation and change and sort of feminine goddess power and knowledge. Like, it's such a powerful one. I don't really like seeing snakes. I don't want to cuddle with them either, but I see, like, you know, the power. And we. I think we have to, like, let our egos go, like, our egos get really involved sometimes in this process, especially the power animals. Like, you know, I really want a kitty or I really want a unicorn. It's got to be a dragon. <laughs> yeah. I love dragons, you know. And and it might be like, what if it's a rat? No, but I wanted a dragon. Well, well you got a rat, you know. And rats are really cool. Rats are great survivors. And they're really canny. They're really like, 
a master's in understanding like what what's really going on in any given situation and surviving. Um, so I think we have to overlook like how we feel about it and really look at the medicine of that animal. Yeah, I was working on um, our animals and you know wanting to attract one and and um, <clears throat> where I live. I, I live, I've got a front porch and a back porch, and my back porch looks out over, you know, greenery and everything. And I was working on, I I really want to connect with my power animal. And the next thing I knew on on my little patio there is a groundhog sitting up on his hind legs, just (laughs) looking out over the whole thing right along with me. And, Mm -hmm. um... Harry and I became very friendly. I mean, he, I never could pet him, but um, he was always there. And I thought, okay, I think this must be a power animal because he's not afraid of me. And and yet every now and then there he was on the back porch just meditating on the greenery and everything. <laughs> Unfortunately, Harry got hit by a car. But um, but it, it, it was that energy was was something that I could totally relate to. And and I have to admit, I never really looked it up because I thought, oh, come on, a groundhog? Come on, you know. Mm-hmm. Are they even in, and I'm sure that they are in the realm of, 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 of uh, power animals. And I, I will go look because it seems to me that it was really quite important and, and I never followed up on it. And, and I think that's something really important that, that everybody should be aware of when you get a hit like that, follow up on it. Don't just let it sit there and think, how weird is that? I'll try again later, you know. Right. Not sure I want to hit you. Sometimes we push away. We push away the power animal because it's not what we're expecting. And and we look close, maybe one that's like a little cuter or a little sexier or something, you know. And and I think that we, you know, really focusing on the medicine is the uh, the important part with power animals. So, there's all kinds of ways you can look them up. You can there's books about them. You can look them up online. There's a lot of different resources. So before you reject your power animal, definitely look up the medicine. That's my advice. Yeah. Well, and you know, you spoke a little bit about signs and omens um, as well. And you know, the, we get them every day. We are absolutely mm-hmm. um, bombarded with signs and omens and. It's important to to recognize that they, that they're there, and the more you write them down in a journal, the the more in, the, the more intensive they become because you're recognizing them and you're putting them down and you're getting a message from them, and and I think most people, you know, see the signs and slash omens, and and negate them as that's just you know, a coincidence. And there is no such yeah. thing as a coincidence. And and I yeah, think it's important that, I mean, to 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 you know, finding a place to park every time you want to find need a place and you say, Please let me have a find a place to park I mean that's a sign. But but yeah. um the phone ringing and you know who it is or you know, there there are so many signs and omens that we get every day and if we if we connect to them, if we acknowledge them, it just opens yet another thread, another link to that realm that we're working so hard to incorporate it into our life. I love working with signs and omens, and I, I feel like once people get hooked into that, it, it's fabulous confirmation on our psychic hooks. That's another way besides the pendulum to really can, or any dowsing to confirm. And when uh-huh. you get into the flow of that world, the world becomes sort of magical. What you find is sort of like the world is open and you get into sort of magical flow of, um, of, you know, I always know I'm heading in the right direction because the signs and omens are off the charts. And once I follow that path, everything flows and happens really easily and beautifully. And, you know, and then I've signed, I've, I'm sure we've all had this experience where we had signs not to do something and then did it anyway. And, you know, uh-huh. that never goes that well. Like, you, you struggle, you know, it, it's hard. Mistakes happen. It doesn't go well. 
So, and, and we can look at anything. It can be the weather. It can be ant power animals. It can be feathers or coins or synchronicities, you know, um, all kinds of things. Oh, the things people say, that's a big one for me. Like, I know if three people tell me the same thing, I really pay attention to it. You should really oh, read this yeah. book or you should, you should really, you know, talk to this person or see this healer. If three people tell me the same thing, I, I, I always take it seriously. That's a big sign for me. Well, I think it's, it's, it's really, it's quite amazing because um, it, it's sort of like um, if life is a, is a river, and and if you if you want if you are trying to make something work as opposed to allowing it you're paddling upstream and that's probably going to get you blisters and not accomplish what you want or if you do accomplish what you think is appropriate for you it will turn out it's not and you'll have to get back in your boat and go with the flow and go with and go with the current and let it take you to where you belong. And it's not that it's not that you're giving up um, control of your life. It's it's going with where the easiest flow is. It's it's sort of like, you know, as as um, as water trickles to form streams and that goes into form rivers and the rivers, you know, go into you know lakes or whatever i mean it, it it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the more you go with the flow the more your life unfolds beautifully and if you keep trying to change it because you think and that's the that's the main word you think you should be doing something else or you think you should be somewhere else quite often what you think is not what is best for you yeah totally and, true and a lot of times our thoughts are like based on other people's ideas, you know, what your parents thought you should do or, you know, what your friends are, you know, doing or saying you should do. And I, our mind is, our mind isn't very psychic in a lot of ways, but our, our intuition, our psychic senses are really attuned to our soul, to our higher self, to this other part of us. And I feel like when we start opening our intuition, becoming more psychic, following the signs and knowledge, recording everything in the journal, doing all these tools, we just live a more soulful life. And that's where things get good. Well, that's 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 where you're feeling. You're going with your feeling, and that's that's you know you mentioned it earlier. Your your body. I mean, I get confirmation chills every now and then, and when that happens, you know, I know something right happened. And if mm-hmm. you, you know, your stomach can tell you quite often, just unless you've had Mexican food and then don't trust it at all. But um, <laughs> you know the the. And, and I love Mexican food. I don't mean to, to trash Mexican food, but it's hard for me to digest. Um, <laughs> but but it, it's sort of like um, listening to yourself physically, not mentally, because your mind only has access to this lifetime. That's all it's got access to. So everything it, it, it has to work with to make choices and decisions comes from through the ego and experience from this lifetime. And if you listen to your body, your body has greater sensitivity and, and is connected more cosmically. So it can give you greater information and insight and trust that information and insight. I, I know that there have been times where um, I was going somewhere and I stopped and I turned around and I went back home. And I know my mother at the time said, what happened? And I said, I just didn't feel right. And later the day we heard about a huge accident on the road I was going to be on. And wow. it was sort of like, you know, I got warned. Um, and, and I paid attention to it. And, you know, there are sometimes you grit your teeth and keep pushing and all you're going to do is get TM. TMJ, you know, if you are. I agree. Our bodies are so psychic and I think a very underrated psychic sense. So I really love that one. Uh, The somatic, I call it the somatic psychic sense. And our bodies always know it's real. They always know, like, what, you know, they're really tuned into what's danger, like what's safe, how we're going to be safe and stuff. And 
you know, I think uh-huh. we've over we've override that. You know, your body will give you really clear messages about people when you meet people. And I think especially if you shake hands, your body will be like, you know, yes or no, you know, and yeah. you can kind of tune into that. Um, they say within like, I don't know, like 10 seconds or something so fast we've, we've made that evaluation. Um, uh, we, our intuitive sense is giving us information about whether our, our people are resonating with us or not. And a lot of that comes through our body. And that's part of the reason why um, as a psychic teacher, I'm, I'm so I'm wanting people to be grounded because if you're not grounded and you're not in your body, you're going to miss a lot of psychic information that's really, really valuable and really important. Oh, absolutely. I know there there are times when, you know, situations aren't going the way I want them to go. And it's a matter of do I try to stir the pot? Do I try to get involved? And if 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 I'm really clear, I'll say, you know, come on, this is not where the flow is going. Back off and and give everything a chance to settle and see if if maybe your direction is in another direction. You know, and, and there are moments when it's like, well, damn, do you have to be so logical? I mean, you know, I want something else. And then the, the answer comes back, yes, but you need something other than that. So it's a matter of, is it I want this or I need this, and and you know you have to you have to weigh that. It, it's it's that same thing about food. You know, do I want this cake or do I need this cake? And yeah. and there are times where, you know, I don't need it but I want it. So right, I'll I'll acknowledge the fact that I am going to pig out on the cake and probably have indigestion, but. You know, you know I, I mean, if you're going to make that kind of a choice or decision, make it consciously. I don't need this, but I really want it. You know, actually, those questions are best applied to a credit card. But um, yeah, I think that, I think food and credit cards, food, our food and spending are good places to be mindful about those things. But you know, the body will tell you. The body will say, you know, this is appropriate or this is not. It tells you. You just have to listen to and also, it. And also how we feel about it. I always tell people who are dating, if you're, you know, in a, in a date in the dating world, really, really pay attention to what your body tells you about the people you're dating because it really knows, like, uh, is your belly, like, soft and relaxed when you're around somebody? Do you feel like touching that person? Or when they come towards you, do you, like, cringe away, you know, like, um, and your mind can be like, no, that's a great person, and your body's like, nope, like, no, 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 you know, and I, I just feel like we – we really benefit from paying really strong attention to our body. Oh, absolutely. And that and the fact that, and the chakra system as well. I mean, I, I tell people who are still dating, um, I, I tell, especially bar situations, you know, ask them, ask them what their favorite color is, you know, what the color they like to have around them the most is. And, you know, if it's if it's red, that's that's root chakra, that's self preservation, that's probably a little selfish. And, you know, it, depending on what color it is they prefer, it, it can help you to sort to kind of screen people right away. And um I've had a number of people tell me that it works quite well. I that's cool. don't do the dating. I, I don't go to bars, so I I haven't been able to really prove it out, but the people that have really worked with that have, have found that you know, especially the blues and the greens, you know, that's that's compassion and that's creative and that's the kind of person that they might want to spend time with getting to know better. Mm. So um that's a good tip. I like that tip. It it's it's you know, I, I mean it's 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 better than just, you know, asking the same questions over and over and over and, you know, can I see last year's tax return and stuff like that. I mean it, it's hard today. To, to be in a situation where you can actually get to know and meet someone that might be appropriate for you, I know it's I know it's very hard. Um, it's, happily, I don't. It's have a good to, time to use your psychic and your intuition. Really, can be can make that, and really any of those things that we go through, any of the decisions we make. And I I'm a, I'm I'm all for like a combination of logic and intuition. You know, I've seen people kind of go off the rails with their 
only you're, they're using their intuition and they're not checking in with their logical mind. So I feel like we need a really healthy, um, healthy mix of both. Like, like get into a hit and then run it through your common sense, especially before you make really big decisions. Like, does it make oh, sense? Yeah. You know, to do that. So we don't want to be only logic and no intuition, but we also don't want to be only intuition and no logic. I've seen lots of people kind of, you know, jam up their lives by, by throwing the baby out with the bathwater that way. But I, I think if we harness both of those things, we can um, sort of, uh, you know, live live to the um, the full advantage of both of those parts of us. Well, I think also asking yourself, how do I feel? I mean, just sitting for a minute and, and saying to yourself, how do I feel about this? You know, and, and being honest and, and giving yourself a chance to settle into discovering what kind of feeling you really are feeling. You know, are you are you feeling warm and fuzzy? Are you feeling calm? Or are you feeling nervous and anticipatory? And And if you're nervous and anticipating and not knowing what you're anticipating, chances are backing off and giving everything time to settle is a, is a better idea. Mm. So, yeah. you know, checking I, in with I think about checking it, in. like green lights, red lights, and, or you know, yellow lights. Like that's one of the things that I do. And I'm like, does this feel like a green light to me? Does it feel like a yellow, like slow, be cautious? Or does it feel like a red light? And uh, for some reason, that analogy really also helps me tap into my intuition. Yeah, I have found um, that as a psychic, the questions you get mostly are the, um, is my relationship good or bad, or when am I going to change my job? And, you know, both of those questions are so personal to that person. It's, It's kind of hard to say. Yeah, you know, dump them and wait for the next one, or yeah, you better quit your job and move on. It's it's sort of like how do you how do you address that? And I think my my biggest my the most frequently question that I ask is how do you feel about this? Just you know, what are your feelings when you when you look at the situation? How does it make you feel? And and once you know how you feel, then you know what action to take. So um, I have a friend of mine whose son is constantly, he's, he's looking for, he's been married and divorced and he has a 10-year-old and he's looking for, you know, the next relationship. And he, he I, I hear from him all the time, is this the right one? And, you know, my response is always, well, how do you feel? And, and you know, it's like, well, I'm confused. And then it's like, you know, then you wait until you're not confused to make your choice, you know. Um, And and then I get that. That's that's the yellow light. That's the yellow light. Or the red lights are like harsh no, like, nope, you know, just clean, harsh no. And I think, you know, if we have a yellow light, we can keep moving forward until we get the green green light or the red light. Um, and, yeah, so I think sometimes when you don't have enough information, we're trying to make decisions without enough data. Yeah, and I think it's important to pull the information out of the person instead of giving them your opinion. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, not not my. It's 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 sort of like if if you had told everybody in minute detail every step you took to get to exactly where you are today, and they repeated it they would not come to the same conclusion and, and and in the same place that you are today. Everybody has their own path. And to try to follow another person's path because you're so you you respect so their where they are and what they've achieved, that doesn't mean that they doing that they if they did the exact same thing for the last thirty or forty years, that they would be exactly where you are. Right. So so true. But it, it, you know, I'm so glad you wrote this book because um, it's such a wonderful guide. And oh gosh, you know. Now, do you do you have a website where all of these meditations are? Um, those uh, meditations are on the publisher's website. So if you go to New Harbinger, um, newharbinger.com, and you search for my book there, and the link for the meditations are actually in the book. 
Um, I do have a lot of meditations and other resources on, uh, lots of free resources on my own website, which is SusaCampion.com. So I have, you know, lots of free classes, classes on energy management, um, things you can take that are, are just free little gifts for people. So I have a lot of resources for people, you know, psychic healers and empaths who are looking for training, and I teach psychic development of all levels. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm so glad you like, I'm so glad you like my book. Um, I, I, um, oh no, really I love your book. Special. I love your book. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I so thought it, you, I thought this one's I, special too, and I really like it. No, it's it's really it's, it's very good. So, is the next book going to be on past lives? Um, no, the next one is going to be um, empaths. I did for my second book that was called Energy Healing for Empaths. Um, right. The next book is actually a journal that's coming out in November. It's called the Psychic Awakening Journal, and it's a prompted um, journal for because I'm such a fan of the Psychic Journal. This one's like quite it's more like a workbook. So there's exercises and prompts and things that can really help you um, d- dig down and do a lot of the things I talked about. And that's going to be a companion book for the one for awakening your psychic ability. So that'll be out in November. Uh-huh. And now I'm working on a, a deck of, of Oracle cards and a book that goes with that too. So then after, really cool. after the journal comes out, it'll be Oracle cards. Yeah. Well, I think, I think one of the, the cool things that you, you did um, when you were talking about uh, dreams and symbols about, you know, checking out what, what, uh, what has been written already about them, but it's what's even more important is what does the dream symbolize to you because that's more important and, and in many ways creating your own psychic um your own book on the symbols that, that you have gotten in your dreams and what it what it means and and what it pretends to because um i think that's very important oftentimes uh a symbol to one person is very different to another and yeah, and absolutely. you know the, there just isn't um i know i read um one lady once i i i may have told you this before um i kept getting antique buttons for her and mm. i told her i said I, I see antique buttons here so why don't you look into them and see if there's some connection to antique buttons at flea markets or something like that because antique buttons come up here over and over and over again and she called me about Two months later, and said, "I've looked at antique buttons till I'm sick, till I'm blue in the face." And she said, "They mean nothing to me." And I said, "I don't understand it because it kept it kept coming up." And I I finally stopped and I said, "Oh wait a minute, <clears throat> is there an older person in your life who is constantly pushing your buttons?" And she said, "Oh my God, yes." <laughs> and so. So the symbol that I got was not really appropriate for what I said to her. And yet when I went back and reinterpreted the symbol, it, it was dead on. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah, I think it's super important, you know, like if, if, let's say and this is sometimes a mistake that people who are learning, like it's, you know, we, as we're learning, we make sometimes. And like let's say you're doing a reading for somebody and you see a roller coaster. Now, I hate roller coasters. So if you wanted to torture me, you could put me on a roller coaster. So if I saw a roller coaster, I mean, I might say to you, oh, my God, it's going to be horrible. You're going to be so miserable. It's the worst thing that's ever going to happen to you, you know, and <laughs> it'll, you'll be terrified and, and, you know, until you throw up. It's like that, you know, but what if your person loves roller coasters? And for them, it's the most fun they can ever have in their whole world. So the best thing to do is say, well, I see a roller coaster. What does that mean to you? You know, and let the, let the client decide because we have that personal symbol library and what things mean to us is our personal symbol library then we have the kind of universal symbol library that's like what Carl Jung talked about and you know um, and on the collective consciousness where in general water means your emotion, emotions in general if you dream about a house it, it's like your internal self you know um, that can be true but I think our personal symbol library takes precedence over the universal one. So always asking, what does that mean for you, um, can really bring out a lot of rich information. Oh, absolutely. And and that way, 
you know when when the symbol hits a dream state or you, or it hits you in in a book or a magazine or a TV show you know exactly what it is waking up inside of you and i mm-hmm. that's what i think the symbols and omens are they're wake up calls it's it's like hey there's something here wake up there's yeah. something going yeah. on pay attention absolutely Yep, and it can and, be a message from your subconscious self. It can be a message from your guides, from your higher self. You know, something is trying to get your attention, and a lot. And really, our so many of our psychic messages come in the form of symbols. So, learning how to interpret symbols is a really important part of psychic development. Because some, you know, people tell me all the time, "Well, I got I I got this image, or I got to have these spirits, but I have no idea what it means." And so, learning dream interpretation, I think I feel like working with Oracle cards or tarot, tarot cards can be really useful in helping us develop those particular muscles that it takes to learn symbol interpretation. And um, um, and there's a skill there's a skill to it once you learn how to interpret symbols. All the all these psychic and all the psychic information comes comes so much easier to decode. Oh yeah, and and you'll find that that there are certain ones that are just you know. A warning. I mean, I mean, one of the traditional ones is um, the, those those who have passed over will leave um, quarters or, or dimes or pennies. And I know when yeah. when my late husband died, um, I went to change the bed and I took everything off of it and I washed everything. And when I went back into the bedroom to put things on, there was a penny in the middle of the bed, and it mm-hmm. was like. I know I, I, you know, I knew Patrick had been there, and it was kind of like, that is so cool because I do not sleep with money, and if I was going to, mm-hmm. it would be gold coins. It would not be a penny. <laughs> so, um, but it, but it was so, you know, I just stood there and I looked at it and I said, well, that's so sweet. You know, he just went through all the work of dying and he left me a penny. That's, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I did. I saved the penny. It was like, okay, this is from Patrick. And, you know, those things do happen. And the more we recognize them and acknowledge them, it, it's sort of like you open, the, the more you recognize them, the wider the, the channel becomes. And, and the, the more often you'll get those symbols in there, those omens. And, and it, it's, it's almost like you are connecting to another world that enhances this one. And it, it takes this world from, my favorite term, it takes this world from black and white to technicolor. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a good, like that moment in the movie, The Wizard of Oz, where everything goes color. Um, and I think for sure that's what it's like for a lot of people. So much when we when we take the time to learn these things, we open to our intuition and our psychic abilities, our world becomes so much richer, so much more full of meaning and purpose. And we are able to connect to our own purpose more and more, and, it, and it, it's funny when you were talking about the type of sessions you get, um, the most common one for me is life purpose. Like, people ask me more than any other question, what am I for? What's my life purpose for? It seems to drive people nuts not to know that, and I think we can really, if we open up our psychic ability and our intuition, we get so much beautiful information about what we're here for, what our purpose is, um, and how we're, how we're meant to express ourselves in this lifetime on the, on the planet right now. Well, yeah, and you know, a good a good um, measuring stick is um, if somebody tells me what they're doing and they don't know if it's right, I, I will say, "Are you happy? Are you joyful?" And if they say yes, mm-hmm. I'll say, "Then, then you've got it made." You know, don't mm-hmm. step off the path. But you know, if somebody yeah. says, "Well, it could be better," and it's like, "Well, maybe you're real close, but you have to adjust it just a little bit." And as soon as you are joyful, as soon as there is ju- just joy in just about everything you do, then you know that you're in the right place at the right time in the right way. Mm. And those those moments are not constant. I might I might add they 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 are fleeting. They come and they go <laughs> because because during during every day we we are in different places. We're in different um, energies and and you know life life is teaching us as we go along. And if you're not having challenges and if you're not having places where you have to, you know, make choices and stuff like that, then 
why are you here? I mean, this is a school. We're supposed to be learning. And if you're not learning anything, then then you, you need to get back on the trail. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think so, and I love your point about joy and happiness. And, you know, I think when we really get on the right path, there's so much joy. And it's not like, <clears throat> you know, we don't work hard, but I work hard. I'm sure you do too, but it's, there's something really beautiful, soul-filling, joyful, rich about doing our soul's work here. Um, that it's, it's somehow adding energy, you know, when we get on the right path. And I think all the things that we've been talking about are in support of that. Yeah, I've been, on occasion, I've been accused of being a Pollyanna. And and um, maybe, but but at the same time, if everything is falling into place, if, there, you know, struggle is important, that's how we learn and grow. But but it doesn't have to be painful. Um, right. You know, and every every now and then it's, it's sort of like, well, I can laugh or I can cry. I'll laugh. Mm-hmm. And and you know yeah. it's it's you know it is it, it it is you know it's sort of a mess you know it's how did I get myself into this mess again? Clearly another lesson that wasn't totally learned, and I will go back and learn it again. But crap, let's do it right this time. You know it's 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 I, I think you have to understand that 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 life is a wonderful adventure. And and while while we will have challenges, I mean, so long as you have laughter and joy, you can get through anything. And I think that's something most people don't understand. The spiritual pathway is not serious and so heavy that that it weighs you down. It is joyful and it lifts you up. And yeah. I think some people m- miss that message. Yes, yeah, agreed. Well, we we have we have clipped through two hours really fast. Um, mm-hmm. I want to I want to thank you so much. This has been again such a pleasure, and I look forward to the next book. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. It's always lovely to talk to you and be on your show. I enjoy this conversation so much, and thank you so much, Barbara. It's been lovely as always. Well, it was my pleasure, and you will be back because. Thank you know, you. I'll hawk your stuff all the time. I think it's great. <laughs> so. yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, and stay in touch, please. Yes, I sure will. Thank you. Okay, and thank you, everybody, for being here. Please check out this book, Lisa Campion, Awaken Your Psychic Ability. It's definitely a handbook you should have. Everybody should have a copy of this. And Mark it up because it's it's really an amazing, amazing book. Good night now. <laughs>